creating flowcharts and organization charts. We're going to start learning about flowcharts. One third of all drawings in Visio 2013 are based on the flowchart, so this makes sense it is one of the most important drawings you'll learn to create. In addition, you'll also learn about the different types of flowcharts, creating a basic flowchart, creating swim lane diagrams, creating organization charts, and the organization chart wizard. The amount of flowchart templates available to you in Visio 2013 depends on what version of Visio you're using. Visio Standard 2013 has four flowchart templates, and Visio Professional contains nine flowchart templates. This includes the four from Visio Standard plus five more. The types of charts are listed here. The first four are found in the Standard and Professional versions, whereas the bottom five, shown in italics, are just in Professional. We have a basic flowchart, cross functional flowchart, workflow diagram, Workflow Diagram 3D, Business Process Model and Notation, ID EFO, Specification and Description Language Diagram, Microsoft SharePoint 2010 Workflow, and Microsoft SharePoint 2013 Workflow. To create a basic flowchart, go to the File tab and click on New. Click on the Flowchart category, then open the Basic Flowchart. As an example for this lesson, we're going to create the process a company uses for hiring a new employee. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the stencils available in the Shapes window. As you'll notice, right now we're looking at the basic flowchart shapes. We can also click on more shapes, quick shapes, or cross-functional shapes to get access to more stencils. To start creating your flowchart, drag a start or end shape to the drawing page. Now hover your mouse over the shape until you see the blue triangles appear. Move your mouse over the right arrow and choose the process shape from the quick shapes menu. Add four more process shapes to your page. Next go to the shapes window. Drag a process shape onto your drawing page. Use the dynamic grid to align it with the first process shape that's already on the page. Add two decision shapes followed by another process shape to the right of the newest process shape. Drag a start and end shape and place it to the right of the last process shape. Use a dynamic connector to connect it. Next, right click anywhere on the page. Choose the connection tool. We're going to connect the process shape on the far right of our page with the process shape found on the second row on the far left. To do this, select the first process shape. We're going to use the center connection point on the right side. Hold your left mouse button down and drag the dotted line that appears to the center connection point located on the left side of the other process shape. We're going to follow the same steps to connect the process shape in the second row to the second decision shape. So right click on the page, select connector. Draw a connector from the bottom of this shape here to the bottom of the second decision shape. Release the mouse and the line is drawn. Drag a bounding box around the shapes in the second row. We want to make more room in our flowchart. Move them down a little bit. Do the same thing for the top row shapes by moving them up. If you're unsure how to move the bounding box, here's a reminder. Once you've dragged the bounding box, you can move your mouse over the border of the bounding box until you see the cursor turn into a four-way arrow. With your left mouse button held down, move the box and the shapes. Drag a document shape and place it below the last process shape in the first row. Use a dynamic connector that links the process shape to the document shape. Now you can see the basic flowchart drawing. You can now add text labels to your flowchart as you learned to do earlier in the course by adding text to the shapes. So I'm now going to go through and add text to all my shapes. You can now see I've added text to all the shapes to demonstrate the employee hiring process. 
Swim lane diagrams. A swim lane diagram, also known as a cross-functional flow chart, can be more effective than a typical flow chart because they are organized by role or department instead of by steps. If you look at the flow chart we just created, you notice that we couldn't list who was responsible for the steps. To do so would have made the flow chart created and hard to read. The reason they're called swim lane diagrams is because each process is placed in its own lane, so to speak, and based on who is responsible for that process step. Let's create a swim lane diagram to show you what we mean. Go to the File tab, select the New button, and then select the Flowchart category. Select the cross-functional flowchart template and open it. You'll then see this dialog box appear right over your drawing page. Select if you want the orientation of your diagram to be horizontal or vertical. The differences in these orientations are illustrated for you. We're going to choose horizontal, so click OK. Title band and two swim lanes then appear on your page, as you can see. Click on the cross-functional flowchart tab that appears in the ribbon. Click on the swim lane button in the insert group. Another swim lane is added. Click on the title band and add a title to your diagram. You can do this by just typing in the text that you want. Next, click on the function and add a department or person. You can now drag stencils and add connectors to link together shapes just as we did with the flowcharts. When you're finished, you can add text labels to these shapes. An organisation chart is used to show the structure of something like a company and depicts a hierarchy. You can use the organisation chart wizard to create an organisation chart, or you can create one by hand. We're going to teach you both methods, starting with creating one by hand. Go to the File tab and click on the New button. Click on the Business category, and then select the organisation chart template. Visio will ask you if you want to use the wizard or if you want to enter the information that's already in a file. Since we're creating an organization chart by hand, we're just going to click the cancel button. This will take us back to our shapes window and drawing window. Let's look at our stencils. Let's start by dragging them onto our page and creating a hierarchy of our organization. I've now finished laying out the hierarchy for the organization. To connect the shapes, right click anywhere on the page and select the connection tool. Then click to select a shape and drop it on top of the shape that represents the next level above it. In other words, connect from the bottom up by dragging a shape and dropping it onto the shape that comes above it. If this message appears, you can click OK or you can select this checkbox to not see the message again. You can also use the org chart tab in the ribbon to change shapes in your chart as well as other options. To change a shape, click on a shape in the drawing window. Then go to the org chart tab in the ribbon and select the new shape in the shapes group.
notice that it changes all the shapes in your chart. It also changes the stencils that appear in the shapes window. You should use the organization chart wizard when you already have data in an electronic format that will be used for the chart. For example, if you have an Excel spreadsheet or workbook that contains names and information, an ERP system that can create an Excel or text file, data in a database such as Access, or data in a Microsoft Exchange server directory. For the purpose of this lesson, we're going to teach you how to use the organizational chart wizard with an Excel book. Go to the File tab and click on New. Go to the Business category and open the Organization Chart template. Click on Create. The first window of the wizard automatically opens. Leave the default option checked. Click on the Next button. Click on a text or plus TXT or Excel file, which is the second option here, and then click on the Next button. Click the Browse button and then locate the file that contains the data. Specify the language you use in the data. And now click Next. Visio will open and read the data that's in the spreadsheet. The column names will decide which holds the names and the structure information. On the next page in the wizard, Visio will display the column names that it thinks are the best match. Click the Next button. In the next window, you can tell Visio which employee data is to be displayed on each shape. On this page, you can select which columns from your data file you want to add to your organization chart shape as shape data fields. Click Next. On this page, you can specify any pictures you want to use, so click Next. On this page, you can decide if you want to specify how much to display on each page. When you click the Finish button, your organization chart is created for you. To customize the layout of any chart, go to the Org Chart tab in the ribbon. Click on the Layout button. Choose a new layout from the drop-down menu. 